Friday, October 27th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich, TGIF, eh? So we have the continuing pressure on the stock market indexes. You know, I start out with the mini usually, the Spider, S&P, go to the DIA, NASDAQ, Russell 2000. So <clears throat> we're oversold. That means that we are very close, usually in time, to a rally. Sometimes these rallies are incredibly profound, like the one we started on March 13th. Huge bull move. Sometimes they don't work very well, and that's where your money management and your disciplines come into play. With an automated trading system like the ER signals, you can make adjustments, but you don't have to practice your own psychological disciplines. It's the strategy that does it for you. That's what they're built for. That's what I built the ER Ehrlich reversal signals. That's what I built it for. I'm waiting. I'm hoping for another buy signal like we got on October 6th, turning price action green and indicating a possible, probable, significant, maybe hugely important turn in the market. We got the top. Red is sell signals and green are buys on July 27th at the exact top of the market. And the December E-mini was just simply not active on October 16th, 13th, excuse me, October 13th of 2022, last fall, a year ago in October, when we got a bullish engulfing buy signal that was the end of the bear market. And I will show you on the next chart, the end of the long-term bear market and the beginning, and again, that's October 13th, last year, the beginning of the bull move on this SPY chart. And the end of it was our ER sell signals. Come on, you can't get better than picking the low day for uh, three quarters of a year and then picking the high day. The day it happens, not after the fact, it's during the day that it happened. So we we're oversold in the spider, we're at the bottom of a support area. A couple of my favorite combinations. I just don't see a rally starting yet. In fact, we just made a new low for the day, I believe, to the tick. So let's see what happens. Now, we're also very close to the end of October, which would be the last day of October Tuesday next week. Last year, we got spoiled bloody murder when we had a blatantly obvious hit between the eyeballs by signal smack in the middle of October, October 13th. But we're not that lucky this year. Now, we got a buy signal that worked for a few days on October 6th. And I claimed at the time because it looked like that was going to be the October lows. Well, you know, time passes and market came up to resistance stalled out and went right back down to where we are right now making new lows for the last few months. But the oversold condition implies we should be very close in time and probably fairly close in price as well to a rally, which could be the October lows, whether they're before Tuesday of next week or maybe the very early part of November, but it should be happening soon. Next chart. Spider, one minute, yep, we just made new lows for the day and new lows for the whole move down. This is the one minute chart. And as you can see, it just you know dropped sharply for a couple of minutes and hit a bunch of sell stops, I'm sure, below yesterday's low and the low earlier this morning and kaboom. But those little kabooms like that and sometimes big ones are often major turning points. Next chart, DIA. Oversold again, <clears throat> new lows to the trend by a long shot and getting back to a support level. So I've been saying for a couple of days now, there's a variety of reasons for this market to turn back up. It's not 
yet. Next chart. Russell. You may not realize this, but the Russell is around the lowest lows for the last three years. You have to go back to, and it may have made new lows for three years. You may, you have to go back to October of 20 before there was, yep, of course, a little buying opportunity right here on October, November, October 30th. Uh, to the exact day, and it just went straight up like crazy eh, for a month or two. That was the October lows, or maybe this one was, I forgot. Um, that's September 23rd, so no, that's it right there. And by the way, it was a ER buy signal also. So let's see some sort of major reversal here real quick in the indexes, or I have to stay bearish. Expectations are expectations. They're not coming true yet. Be a little patient. And if you're short, tighten up your stops. If you're flat, look for buy signals. If you're long, you're wrong. Next, cues. Oversold yesterday. Today's an inside trading range, no higher, no lower. And the problem with the cues is they just broke out on the wrong side of a downward slanting wedge, which is usually bullish, but they broke out of it to the downside. And today's high is not violating any rules, getting back up inside the wedge or pennant. And it's a little higher, but near the low of the day, a little higher than yesterday's close. So I don't know, this looks, if I was looking at this chart all by itself, I'd say definitely down and maybe to this next support red zone. So it's not looking bullish at all at this moment. Next is our NASDAQ futures contract, December futures. And of course, it's the same thing. You've got the downside breakout and you've got an inside doji at the moment and it's around the middle of the range. And all I can say is look out. It looks like it could be dropping. I don't want that. It's October which has a 90% of the time in the last 30 years bottom in October. In the last several weeks, months, few months, I detailed that for you month or year by year, 30 years worth. So there's a high historical likelihood it's not happening yet. Next. Also, the Russell 2000, we're starting to make lower lows for the day. Here we have the one-minute Qs, almost new lows again for the day. The E-mini Christmas contract, one-minute chart, again, chewing away at new lows. NASDAQ daily, uh, I'm sorry, one minute, hanging in there like the QQQs. Let's go to the October low daily data chart. I actually am right on the edge of the time frame and price range that I have been looking for the market to come down into ever since two or three months ago. I put this on the chart. Now, and I guess I just accidentally moved that over a little bit. There we go. Okay, October, yeah, that's perfect. Now. This means that I'm just barely starting to come into my price range. I wanted to see 407, 406 to 407.50 was my little bitty point and a half range. And I wanted it to be in the middle of the month for various reasons, not just because it's the middle, October 16th. But I didn't get the day right, that's for sure. But I'm coming down, I'll be damned, to the price level that I was looking for. And it still has a two and a half days to go, trading days to go. Next, I'm going to go through the futures with you. We got the E-mini, and that is just a different perspective, almost getting down to its final objective. If you believe the head and shoulder top is still relevant, it started out great. And that started out September 21 on a downside breakout. It made half of the downside objective within a week and a half. Then we had October 6th bullish engulfing, and I thought the market had turned, which it did for a few days. Plenty of profit potential there. 
scalp or short-term position swing trading. But of course, a long-term investor would now be hurting because they may have bought in and started to ignore it, which you never do to the market. Don't ever turn your back on the market. Always have protective stop in. And I call them protective. They're called stop loss by tradition. But I like the word protective stop better because they protect a profit or protect you from losing too much. Either one. So I'm looking for a turn. That's all there is to it. I haven't gotten it yet. I'm a little on the disappointed side at the moment. Next chart is going to be the NASDAQ. And it could have just started something, but I hope not. Next chart is bonds. So far, the bonds are doing okay, but nothing great. It had a bullish engulfing October 23rd. Now, the October lows have nothing to do with bonds. I mean, that's just a coincidence. It's the bullish engulfing I like. Two days later, we had an ER3 fill, and that's where the little green dots are. A little bit of a loss on the first day. A very nice little profit yesterday, and a little bit less, but still a profit today. I'm looking for a rally. The first minor upside objective is 114 and a half. Then I'm looking for 120. And if I can get up to 1920, we may have started a very big long-term bull market. Next is 10-year notes with the basically the same commentary, although it came very close to stopping our position out, getting below the low of the green and golfing ER buy signal. And it's a little lower on the day today, but still. Mm, modestly profitable. Next, crude. Doji inside trading range, bounced off support. I talked about it for the last three days. Today's the fourth day that it's in the red zone and hanging in there. A little bit of a rally. I really need to see a close uh, above these recent highs to maintain a bullish stance. The lows since May have been higher and higher and higher. The highs have been since May, higher and higher and higher. And that's the basic, very crude uh, definition of a bull trend. So I'm bullish, no signal at the moment, nothing really to go off but support and the longer term trend. Next, natural gas, oversold on the low day. I like what I see. We're getting very strong. Yesterday, we finally got stopped out of a previous short sale. And the ER1 got short on October 11th. ER3 got short on October 12th. It's the ER3 position, ER3 position trade that you see the green equity plot. And we're out yesterday on the rally. Good trade. Excellent. Next, and so for the moment. I'm neutral to friendly, but gosh, this thing is really going mostly sideways for many months. So I can't get overly excited at this point. Yeah, it might come up to 38, 37. We'll see what happens then. And it's most of the way there already. Commentary on heating oil. Support area is not doing the best job of hanging in there, but the closing prices are right in the middle for the last few days. The major feature here is, you know, the trend is your friend. And since May, we've had the higher highs and the higher lows. And the last significant high has been a new high for years. So you got to be at least neutral to bullish on an intermediate to longer term basis because there's no super bad damage done to any long term bull trend. I'm bullish but it may take a bit to get some new highs. Next, gold. Wow. We have had such a great year with the precious metal markets in gold, silver, and platinum, and we still are having great luck. So we picked the bottom of the gold market again. I think I'll show you real quick here how this year has panned out. So since January, we sold the top. We bought the bottom. Unfortunately, we didn't get any sell signals on the top. We sold that top. We bought this bottom. We bought this bottom, and we're still long from that bottom on October 6th. 
think I've got something even more impressive to show you in silver in a moment. So our trailing stop is the yellow line under the market if you're long and over the market if you're short. Always yellow. If the price action is yellow, that means you're overbought or oversold with my custom RSI. Wells Wilder himself um, taught me RSI back in the 70s and 80s. And uh, I've modified it in a variety of ways to help with my trading. So I'm looking for higher levels, but I'm very, very watchful for the end of this bull swing because it's been overbought for a couple of weeks now. That implies that maybe it's developing a top here. So I'm very cautious. I need a new high with a new high close in order to get a little more optimistic about another shot up for a day or two or three. Next chart, gold trade with a different input for the uh, trailing stop. Uh, we got in at the same point in time and price way back here about uh, 1844 on, what's the date, uh, October 6th, and rode it all the way up to, uh, till we got punched out of the trade uh, October 22nd at around 1982. Since we're flat, and guess what? Gold hasn't done much. It's gone up a little bit more, but down a little, up a little. So I think our offset is not too bad so far. Next chart, silver. That is not, I'm sorry to say, a sell signal today. There is an error on the high-low data from yesterday's, and I've called the data vendor about this, and they're going to fix it. But if you've been trading any significant amount of time, and I mean maybe a few years or more, you'll know that bad data occurs and you usually can see it blatantly obvious, period, either daily charts or one minute, for example. That commonly it stands out like a sore thumb and looks weird. But this very small trading range yesterday does not look like anything we have been seeing consistently over history. So I was terribly suspicious, checked it out on other charts on other, well, and it was too small. So they're gonna fix it ASAP. Next, and the silver just looks like it's gonna drift a little lower. Um, platinum, we got the bottom day, we got the high day on a sell signal, and we got almost the low day. So platinum has been very good to us. And we got, well, we got a low and there's a low and there's a high and there's another low. Since August, four profitable signals, each one of them at major or intermediate turning points. So, you know, this is developed originally for swing trading purposes, but the ER signals has been adapted for scalping, both ER1 and ER3 and position trading or swing trading. Hey, if you've got a swing trade that's doing great, do you just jump out because you've made a little bit of money? Maybe yes, if you have objectives in mind and you have a target in mind and you get there and you've done it. But it's not a very good feeling, which I've had many times. When it doubles in profit in a day or two and you're sitting there and you don't have the position anymore. And that's because you had a target that you reached and you're happy with that at that moment. Next chart, high grade copper, not much going on. Bear trend, rally to resistance, probably gonna stop at around today's high where it has so far already. It looks like a good spot for it to stop. And it's the high of the zone that I put in here, this little red resistance area. So I wouldn't be surprised if that came true. Next chart, soybeans, now, um, we are still in this trade, and this should be up here. We have the <clears throat> bearish, bullish, bullish, bullish engulfing on October 12th, the beginning of this rally, which hasn't gone very far and hasn't, well, it's been two or three weeks, so that's been a while now, but we are not stopped out, and our trailing stop is continuing to protect our position 
Let's see what happens. I'd love to see this start to make higher highs up above 1342 ASAP. Can't help but be bullish. We did get a buy signal. It is working. Not the best, but it's working since the low on October 12th. We got a great sell signal up here, almost a high of the whole move and had a great profitable trade. Keep in mind that although the inputs uh, in the strategy can be adjusted to your personal preference, once you learn how to drive the car, then you're going to modify the engine maybe, put better tires on it maybe, maybe uh, do some other modifications to make it do what you want it to do personally, but you couldn't get that off the showroom. So it's flexible, but automated trading systems, you're supposed to, at least in the beginning, use them the way they're set up because they got a track record that's supposedly showing you that they're good to go the way they are, not that the markets change over time, and they do, and that you can change the strategy a little bit, and you can with my ER for both TradeStation and NinjaTrader. Next, bean oil. Wow. I mean, come on. This is a double top for bean oil. The double top in itself was a head and shoulder top, the head of a head and shoulder top. The shoulder high was first July 5th. Second shoulder, last shoulder was on September 15th. We sold short because of the bearish engulfing ER sell signal on the second high of the double top formation, which was the head of the formation and the second highest high for the whole damn trend. And we're still short. Uh, we, we got short at about 32, 63, excuse me, 63, 50 on August 21st with ER1. So that should be actually right there. And we are still holding the trade because our protective stop has not gotten stopped out yet. So these lines need to be a minor adjustment. There we go. It's great. Super great trade. Not only that, but the head and shoulder top formation is working. The initial downside breakout was on a closing basis, September 28th. There was a rally back up to the neckline. And then we started making new lows for the trend. My m minimum downside objective is 50 flat, give or take a few ticks. And we have gotten already down to 50.81 or so. The low of the day, 50.82, three days ago. So I almost reached my objective. We got oversold, bounced. Now it looks like we could either today or very early next week make lower lows and get to my 50. Now I'm not gonna take profits at 50. It's when the trailing stop gets hit. You could go down to 49, 87, 45, 44. This could keep going. Next chart, soybean meal. Well, I was pretty much wrong here. Uh, I thought this was a very large head and shoulder. And when it came time for it to break out, it looked like it was breaking out. I've shifted these lines around a little bit. So this was a false downside breakout back here about three, four weeks ago. And instead, it just came down to support period and bounced at a, an oversold condition. Now we're very overbought. And RSI has been up to 87, which is very high. In the last year plus, year and a half, we were only up to 87 once before, and the market dropped for a few days. Not what you would normally expect. This decline should have been a lot bigger and better, but it wasn't. I mean, you have to roll with the, the way market moves. One of my favorite saying is um, you can never make the market move, do what you want it to do. You always have to move with it, meaning get back in sync. Right now, resistance at the top of it, overbought like crazy. I think there's a good chance, I'm not doing anything about it yet, that today's high is the highest high. So 448.3 or four, or even 449. Uh, what is the high today? It is, it is exactly 4840, 4840. Could be the high price. I can't tell yet. Even if I looked at one minute charts, it wouldn't help much. 
um, I need to start closing below today's lows. And then I might start screaming bloody murder because it could come all the way deck, back down to 360s. Next chart, corn. As I've been saying, it's going to go the way of wheat. And I think it's going to make new lows for the trend probably next week. I thought it might do it this week, but, you know, half the day is up. And I think we're going to see lower lows very soon. Wheat, it's already done that kind of thing. Broken to new low ground, rallied to resistance, headed down to new lows. Rally stopped, headed down to new lows. Rally stopped. Now I think it's again headed down to new lows. Cattle. Got oversold. Told you it should rally. Today is the day. And I talked about that little gap up here maybe getting closed. The first place for it to stop rallying, it didn't. And that was the little resistance area I've got here in red. And said it went right through it this morning and almost got to the gap, which I think now stands a chance of being closed. So now I'm looking for a rally high at 184.42 and a half, give or take a little, to stop the rally and turn it back down again. Our last significant signals was the top of the market, bear signal, top of the market, bear signal, top of the market, bear signal, almost the top bear signal. Unfortunately, nothing green in the middle there, no buy signals. Almost top of the market, sell signal and a buy signal. Okay, that worked out great. Now I monitor, well, the software monitors, the whole universe of US stocks to look for these conditions and provide me with the signals. So I have at least five or 10 or sometimes 50, 60, 70 in one single day, like last October 13th of 2022. Unbelievable, huge, blatantly obvious, hits it between the eyes, buy signal. I was hoping I'd get the same thing this year, but looks like it may not develop. So I'm almost getting short again on cattle, not quite. Uh, buy signal a couple of days ago in hogs, working great. What can I say? You watch these things, you learn to trust them, because I don't trust anything from the beginning. I've been doing this too long. Once you begin to learn to trust them, and that may take a little while, then you begin to poke your finger at it and trade it a little bit. That's cherry picking, so that's not really the best thing in the world. But over time, you start to trick every signal because you don't know whether the signal is going to be a great one, a small one, or maybe a little loss. But we don't take big losses. Next chart. That's the killer. Letting yourself be convinced that you're going to be right sooner or later, but you're wrong right now, and it just gets worse. I was a hedge fund manager the owner, president, rather, of a Forex firm for five years. I had my own independent brokerage, Commodity Futures Company, for mm, 10 years or so, and many other positions in the futures industry. Uh, taught technical analysis worldwide for online trading academy. Well, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to stop there. So I guess I'm getting, yeah, I am. I just noticed this. Today, we have another sell signal in OJ. Well, I've got to say it. I just got through lecturing about this. We have an outside uh, down day a few moments ago. It ticked a little higher. If this closes lower, if it closes lower, then I'm going to have an official sell signal again. I know the last one, which was on October 18th, didn't work. It immediately, one or two days later, had a small loss. But here we go again. My experience of decades of watching these things is that they cluster sometimes. You get a signal, it doesn't work. You get another signal, it doesn't work. You have two small losses. Now you're all of a sudden gun shy because you don't want to take the next signal, which this is another signal. And you don't. And all of a sudden this one works like crazy. We'll see what happens. I'm turning bearish on orange juice. Can't help it. If it closes lower than yesterday's close. Cocoa, 
strong rally, new high ground, overbought, it's not unusual under the circumstances, said that yesterday. And maybe we'll get a little more punch out of this before it comes back down, probably at a minimum on the retracement. And I'm bullish, I can't help but look, all the lows are higher, all the highs are higher. What the heck is the trend here up? And unless you have damn good reasons, and I did back here on August 7th, and I was right for a couple of days, rather spectacularly, uh, to change your mind, don't. So the only reason I got to go short is maybe I'll get another red ER cell signal because it's overbought. And that's the first criteria I need in order to get a cell signal. Next chart, coffee, did it three days ago. Two, two days ago. And it did it in a big way. Now, we're not, you know, crashing here, but it is slipping and we do have a profit. So, so far, so good. Not spectacularly, but these things can change very, very quickly. We got a very nice buy signal here. Not fantastic, but good. We got a very good and fantastic sell signal right there. And that was June 16th and it crashed. That's what I love is these signals and all of a sudden whoopee. Next, sugar. Eh, it's having trouble at these levels, 27, 28. But again, the trend is your friend. Looking for higher highs. Not really overbought, but kind of close. It could punch up into new high ground in the next couple of days without much trouble. Next, cotton the rag did get oversold, has been rallying a little bit, but it's very feeble. The trend here is ambiguous. One could claim it's up, but very, very slowly. You've got your higher highs for a year, and you've got your lows coming up a little bit faster, but yeah, it's, it's a bore. And we're back to the E-mini, which has bounced very slightly from its new lows. Keep your eyes out on the stock market indexes for buy signals. You guys have a great weekend. Thanks for subscribing, I hope. Manana.